Okay, and welcome to where we're going to work with some more rational expressions. And as a reminder, rational comes from the word ratio. We're going to be dealing with fractions, and in this one, we're going to be talking about how to add and subtract them. So we first look at fractions on how we used them with numbers. So let's do something like 1 sixth plus 3 eighths. Uh, what does that equal? Do you remember what we had to do very, very first? Yeah, we had to get a common denominator. Now, for those of you that missed the earlier one, denominate means to apply a name to something. So a denominator is a label. So this is 1 6 plus 3 eighths, which is why we can't add them the way they look right now. They are mislabeled. We need to have the same label. So we can say like 2 sheep plus 3 sheep equal 5 sheep. You can't do 2 sheep plus 3 penguins equals 3 anything unless you call them both by the same label, which sheep and penguins could be called vertebrates. And then you could do it. So yeah, we've got to do this. So let's think about how do we do it right now. 1 6 plus 3 eighths, common denominator, 6 and 8 both go into 24. So we would times this guy by 4, and this guy by 3, and we end up with 4 24 plus 9 24, and we end up with 13 24. And yes, 24 is the denominator or label. We got 4 of those 24 plus 9 of those 24, that's 13 of those 24. So when we get a common denominator, it's crucial that they both go into it. Now I'm going to do this one again in slow motion so you can see, uh, well, what we do when we don't know the times tables. One, sixth plus three eighths. Let's say we didn't know our times tables and six and eight both went into 24. Well, this guy we could prime factorize it and this is two times three. This guy is going to be two times four, which is two times two. Now notice what happens. When we did this times by four and times by three, we times by three right here. Look at what denominator we created, two, 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 three. In order to make this guy look the same as this guy, we would have to times by 2 times by 2. Now, do you see how this denominator and this denominator, when sliced open and seen with their DNA exposed, yeah, 3 2s and a 3, 3 2s and a 3. This was our least common multiple from way, way back. And that's what gives us this least common denominator. And you'll notice this is 2 times 2 is 4 plus 9 all over this same denominator, and I'm going to leave it just like this for a minute. There we go. And you'll notice we get 13 24. So exact same answer, but a little bit, some might find this a little bit peculiar to go about it this way. Well, why would we ever do this? Well, what if we had something like 1 6 plus 3 uh, 20 seconds? Let's say something like that. Do you know your 22 times tables? I don't. So what if we did this and said, okay, this is really 2 times 3, and this is really uh, 2 times 11. How would we get a common denominator between these? Well, this guy has to have an 11 in it, 2 times 3 times 11, and to make this the same, this guy would have to have a 3. Can you see how valuable it is to have this factored when we don't know the times tables? Genius! So we actually have 11 plus 9, that's 20, over 2 times 3 times 11. Now we could times these together and you get I think uh, 66. Ah, 6 and 22 both go into 66. Who knew? But this is 66. But notice how easy it is when it's factored to simplify. And we get 10 over 3 times 11 or 10 times 10 over 33. Let's take a look at this one up here. 2 over xz plus 3 over yz. Notice how they're not alike at all in the denominators. Well, they both have a z in it. That's kind of nice. But we would have to get common denominators. This is that principle. Remember what we talked about? Principles. Uh, boiling all of our knowledge down into principles. This is one that has reached back clear into arithmetic and will be with us forever. You may only add things that are alike or have the same label. So this common denominator principle um, we need to multiply this guy by something and this guy by something so that their denominators are the same. Notice this has an x and a z that has a y and a z. So we would need a y over here. And we can do that. We just times this fraction by 1. Well, this guy needs an x. 
Now look, the bottoms are both x, y, z. That is the common denominator. And this guy is now a 2y plus a 3x. And it doesn't simplify any more than that. But that's how we're able to do it. And the connection, it's hot. it was easier when we knew the multiplication tables. When we didn't, it got a little bit tougher. But we could still handle it. You don't know your x, y, and z times tables. And that's why it's so valuable to see this principle in action. Let's do one more and see how you do with it. Let's do uh, 7 over x plus 3 over x plus 5. What does that equal? Hmm, I don't know. Well, let's look at it. These guys, in order to be a common denominator, they're completely different numbers. x plus 5, this could be like a 4, and this could be a 9, and this could be a, an 11, and that could be a 16. They don't really have com something in common. You might say, hey, they both have an x. No, nope. we're looking for things that we can times by, times by, times by. So we need something that we can times by to get there. And really, this will just this times that. So we have to times by x plus 5, x plus 5. So what would we have to times by on this side? x. And now look, we have the common denominator right there. So this is all over x times x plus 5. Good. And here we have, ooh, this is 7x plus 35 uh, plus 3x. Because you just add the numerators. So now this is 10x plus 35 all over x times x plus 5. Now it's possible that you might get to this point in the problem and say, hey, wait a second, does something cancel? Well, you can factor the top to see if it cancels, like we did in the last section. You get 5, uh, 2x plus 7. Does that allow anything to cancel? Nope. So it would not be necessary to factor it, but it might be beneficial to see if these, these could go together. OK, let's clear that off and try uh, one big one. All right, here we have one. 3 over x squared minus 4 plus 5 over x squared minus 7x minus 18. We are going to insert something, and you'll see why we have to do it. Uh, factor everything. We did that in the last section because it was so valuable to see everything in, as to what it was made of. And here's no difference. we got to factor everything. So here, this guy factors into difference of squares, x minus 2, x plus 2. And this guy factors into uh, x minus 9, x plus 2. Excellent. All right. So how do we get a common denominator? Well, they both have an x plus 2, but this guy has an x minus 9, so we need an x minus 9 over here. Good. And this guy needs an x minus 2. Now you see how we kind of, in a way, made it up. We said, what does this guy have that this guy doesn't? What does this guy have that that guy doesn't? And yeah, when we do that, we have now created a like denominator. That's really how it's done. So overall, here's the denominator, x minus 9, x minus 2, x plus 2. And you may leave that in factored form so that if we happen to get lucky in the top, has a factor of x minus 2, x plus 2, or x minus 9, we can cancel it easily. Uh, so what do we get on the top? This is 3x minus 27. Oops, 3x minus 27. And this is 5x, so plus 5x minus 10. So that's going to equal 8x minus 37 all over this big mess down here. x minus 9, x minus 2, x plus 2. Oh yeah, hey, that's nice. Look at that. Does the top factor at all? Can you factor anything out to see if we can cancel? No. So we are not able to simplify. And that's the end result. All right, time for you to give it a try all on your own. To the boards! Here are some problems for you to try. One, two, three, and four. Write them down. Pause the video. Work them out in your video notebook. And then press play when you're ready to see them worked out and compare your answer. Welcome back. All right, 2 over x plus 3 over y. We need a common denominator. So we'll times this guy by y, times this guy by y, times that guy by x, times that guy by x. And we now have common denominator of x, y. And on this side, we get 2y. 
And on that side, we get 3x. Oh, look at that. That looks like what we just did on the other screen. Okay, next one. Number two. Uh, common denominator, we'll have to times these two together. So we get x times x minus 7 times x minus 7. And we'll have to times this guy, the whole thing, by x and x. So we end up over x times x minus 7. And we have 2x minus 14 plus 3x. And what does that equal? 5x minus 14 over x times x minus 7. It would have been nice if that would have been a 2. We could have factored that out and canceled the x minus 7s, but we didn't quite get it able to simplify any more than that. All right, next one, number 3. Ooh, this one looks huge. What's up with that? Step number 1, factor completely. Well, this guy is x minus 7 times x plus 5. And this one is x plus 5 times x plus 3. There they are factored. So we need to times them by something, top and bottom, to make sure they're the same. Well, they both have an x plus 5. This has x plus 3. So we need an x plus 3 over here to make this guy as similar as we can. And this one is going to need an x minus 7 x minus 7. Excellent. All right, so what happens when we do that? We'll get the de common denominator of x minus 7 times x plus 5 times x plus 3. And on the top, we get 6x plus 18 minus, now notice that this minus 5, the minus sign sticks with the 5. That's a really tough thing to see. But if you just jump the 5 in, you still have to subtract everything on the top. So the minus sign sticks with that 5, and you get a minus 5x plus 35. So simplifying the top, we get 1x plus 18, and 35 is 53. Well, that thing's not going to factor anywhere, so this won't simplify any better than what we have right here and finish it off with the denominator x plus 53 over those big mess right there and that is those two fractions added together crazy huh and the final one oh we got three fractions that means we're gonna have to get a common denominator among all of them well first step factor this guy is factored that guy is factored this guy is not factored this is x x minus 2 all right, so let's go through and make every one of them a common denominator now. So uh, this has an x and that has an x, but this guy doesn't have an x, so we're going to need to times this by x and times it by x. Um, this has an x minus 2, that has an x minus 2. This guy needs an x minus 2 in its life. Now, are all three denominators the same? They are. See how you can just add these factors on? Well, not add, multiply these factors. As long as you do it to the top and the bottom, you're free to do that because you really just times it by 1. So we really get this whole fraction over x times x minus 2. And on the top, we have 3x minus 6 minus 5x. So that negative 5 was right there, plus 7. All righty. Uh, 3x minus 5x is negative 2x minus 6 plus 7 is a plus 1 over x times x minus 2. And does it simplify? Nope, the top won't factor any better. So we're stuck right there. Well done. You'll notice we didn't have any uh, new principles in this. This was just combining old principles in a new environment. All right, you're ready to head on to your homework.